Hello everyone and welcome to Moya Mix Hub. This is part four in a series of videos where we're having a visual look at compressor attack times. If you haven't seen parts one to three, the links are on the screen now. Today we're going to be having a look at compressor attack times against an acoustic guitar. So here we are. First of all, this is the guitar part itself. That's just the raw recording. So what we're going to do is use the Logic built-in compressor, which is the digital compressor to start with. So what might we want to do with this actual guitar part? Well, if we listen to it again, depending on the track, depending on where it's going in the mix, we may want to reduce those transients, make it a thicker sound, make it more consistent. Okay, so as I've mentioned before, on this compressor, we have two modes, peak or RMS. So we'll have a look first of all at some peak settings to see if we can reduce those transients and get a more consistent sound. So here I've bounced out some settings. Like I said, we've got it in peak mode and we're just altering the attack time here, zero, zero milliseconds, five and 30. As with the previous videos, the zero millisecond peak mode has just shaved the transient off. So we've got a super loud signal here. compared to this. But you can really hear the compressor in that. It sounds really clogged and choked. So let's try the five millisecond one. You can see it's a thicker signal. You can see we've got more transient and less body. In, uh, than we have on the zero milliseconds. It's a little bit less choked, but it's still getting choked up a little bit. If we go for 30 milliseconds. I can tolerate that. So there we've got more signal. We've controlled those transients and yet it's not sounding overly compressed. Again, it depends on the mix. If it was a raw acoustic, on its own, with just a singer maybe, you might not need any compression at all. So if it's a dense mix with guitars, etc., you may need extra compression. And you may sacrifice a little bit of tonal quality just to make it fit in the mix. A thing that you have to decide with acoustic guitar as well, is it more of a, is it more of the body of the guitar that you want to hear? Is it more of the tone or is it more of the percussiveness? Depending on what part the, the acoustics playing within the mix will depend on what compressor settings you set. So, they're the peak settings, and we, we see we can get a, a reasonable sound on that 30 millisecond attack setting. But you can still hear the compression a little bit. Let's see what we can do with the RMS settings. So here we are with the RMS settings. If you don't remember what the RMS and peak are, they're basically two modes within the compressor. There's a video that I've done specifically talking about RMS and peak modes. The link is on the screen now. Or you can look at the previous three videos where I mentioned them a little bit when we're doing um, attack times with the other instruments. So what does this tell us? Well, we can see zero milliseconds, five and 30 are not much different between them all. It's an RMS compressor. It's not gonna really uh, grab the transients in a way that we want to grab them. All it's done actually is turn the guitar down. It's made this transient here. If you look at this one here, to the right hand side of that. It's actually made it worse. So it's not clamping down these transients at all. And if I just play the original and flick between. Okay, there's some differences there, but the RMS compressor is not doing what we need it to do in this particular case. Another way of clamping down on transients would be to actually use tape compression. On this one, I've put a Kramer tape. And what tape will do is it will control the transients in a quite a natural way. Plus, it will add saturation to your sound. So this is a good way of controlling an acoustic guitar. So if I just flick the tape on for a moment onto the original sample. Hitting it quite hard. And what it will what do now is it will control those transients 
these, for example, and as you can see on the bounce here, they're both set to about the same level, yet we've got, you can see from the waveform, it's a fatter sound now. So if I play them both side by side, you can, you can hear we've got a louder level for the same amount of digital signal. So that's one great way of controlling an acoustic guitar, putting it through some tape saturation and tape compression. Another way to control these transients would be to use two compressors. The purpose of this is the first compressor is to kind of even out the sound a little bit and the second compressor is just to shave down the peaks a little bit so we can push more signal into it. So how have I got these set? Uh, the first compressor is in RMS mode, it's a 2 to 1 ratio, it's digging into the sound quite a bit, uh, 20, uh, minus 20 threshold, and if I just play it, turn that compressor off, we get about 5 dB of compression. Okay, and the second compressor is in peak mode, set to zero, four to one, and it's just going to knock those transients down, so they're not going to cause us any, we're not going to lose any digital headroom because of them. The RMS compressor here, this one, on its own without the second compressor and it's just sort of level leveled the signal out a little bit and um, made the body of the signal sustain more and then once we put in both compressors we get this so if i play the original turn both compressors off And you can hear we've got transients, we've got volume, we've got body, and it doesn't sound unnatural. Okay, so now let's have a look by doing a null test so you can hear what the attack time's doing. What I've got here is the acoustic guitar part copied to two tracks. Each track's got a compressor on with the same settings, and one of them has this utility plugin on where the phase is inverted. You can see they're both compressing, but there's no sound. So what I can do now is I can turn up the attack time and you can actually hear what the attack is doing and what it's adding to the sound. Okay, so just a bit of scratchiness at the moment, yeah? So that's going to give you a percussive sort of, a bit of extra percussiveness. Is that a word? It is now. So we're at 50 milliseconds then, you can hear. I mean, how loud is that compared to the track? So that's all that's adding. It's not actually adding that, it's, it's removing everything else other than that. So that would be the difference you would hear. Okay, Chris, so you can hear on those faster settings that it's um, really sort of a scratchy sound that it's adding. If we just flick them both over onto RMS and see what they sound like on RMS, we may need to just dig a bit deeper for RMS. So let's go for minus 20 because RMS is looking for the body of the sound, not the transients that's coming above. It's looking for the um, energy that's coming above threshold. So let's just uh, compare those. Let's just see if they cancel. Which they do. Let's let's listen to the attack in RMS mode. It's not as scratchy. It's more. What's the word? Maybe like a shaker, I guess. So we're at 100 milliseconds there, near enough. If I just click that off. I'll flick the compressor in and out. We've lost a little bit of gain.
Yeah, so that you, you can hear that little bit of attack that that's adding. Um, but we've gone up to 100 milliseconds attack time there. I mean, it seems it seems a lot. I think the less compression on an acoustic guitar makes it sound more natural. More compression is probably needed if it's a dense mix. So one other final way, which I use sometimes to get a um, the best of both worlds, really, a thicker sound and keep the transients, is using a parallel chain. So what I've got here are th four files. The top one is the original, which we've heard. The next one is the parallel chain. Okay, and it's going through an 1176 and a limiter. And it's smashing it quite a lot. And we're taking the transients off completely. So let's have a look. So we've got 10 dB of gain reduction there and 4 dB of uh, the limiters taking 4 dB of the peaks off. Fast attack, pretty fast release. And what happens then is we get this file here. Okay, which as you can see is just the, the transients are shaved off. It's a nice, fat, thick sound. And what we're going to do now is add that back into the original. And by doing so, we end up with this. Okay, which as you can see, we've got transients still, still got the original transients intact, but yet we've got a fatter tone to it. So if I compare the original, Okay, worlds apart, aren't they? Completely different. Okay, and finally, we're just going to have a look at how a couple of classic compressors handle the acoustic guitar. Let's have a look. What have I got here? 1176. Let's have a look at that one. So the 1176 on its own, this is the original signal. This is the 1176 with these settings. And as you can see, we gain quite a lot of digital headroom, a fatter tone, does the job pretty well, actually. So if I just compare these two, Okay, enough said about that really. It's doing it's doing what you'd need. It's controlling the transients, making a fatter tone, doing a great job. So here we are with the LA-2A, same sort of thing. That's the original signal. This is the tone coming out of the LA-2A. And it's uh, compare. Let's just uh, set it up right, play that. Okay, so it's doing its job. It's controlling the transients, a fatter tone. You can see in the body of the um, export here that it's a lot fatter. If I hover it over there, you can see it's much fatter tone. So there you go. The LA-2A does what it should do, really. Um, does it quite well. The 1176 also does well. So does the tape compression, parallel compression, peak compression. All depends what you want to do with the compressor. Are you trying to make it sound more percussive? If you want to add more body, parallel compression is a great way to go. The LA-2A and the 1176 both doing a great job at controlling the transients in order to allow the body to bloom more and, and you can hear it more in the mix. So again, if it's, a, if it's an acoustic track that you're doing with just maybe sing a songwriter type thing, maybe no compression is needed at all. If there is any, keep it as natural as possible, keep it to as little as possible. Thing is, if you over compress acoustic guitar, you can hear it start choking and you want to really avoid that. If it's a dense mix, you want to, you're going to need to put a little bit of compression in there. But are you trying to get the body out in the dense mix or do you just want to hear the transients more? Again, it, as they say, it's horses for courses, depends on the song. So I just thought it'd be great to have a look at physically and visually what the attack time of the compressor is doing on an acoustic, because sometimes when you're trying to listen for things, especially when you're new to it, you're not sure what you're listening for, but when you can actually see what's happening on the screen, it's a little bit easier to follow. So I hope you got some use from that. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And of course, as ever, send me chocolates because, well, they're nice. So I appreciate your time and I will know you will see me in the next video. I won't see you because we're not on Skype. Until then, goodbye.